chapter 10. Of course, Maniac didn't know any of that. He was simply glad the chase was over. He turned and started walking, catching his breath. East Chestnut, East Marshall, Green Street, Arch Street. He had been around here before. That first day with a girl named Amanda. Other days jogging through. But this was Saturday, not a school day. And there was something different about the streets. Kids all over. One of them jumped down from a front step and planted himself right in front of Maniac. Maniac had to jerk to a stop and keep from plowing into the kid. Even so, their noses were practically touching. Maniac blinked and stepped back. The kid stepped forward. Each time Maniac stepped back, the kid stepped forward. They traveled practically half a block that way. Finally, Maniac turned and started walking. The kid jumped around and plunked himself in front again. He bit off a chunk of candy bar he was holding. Where are you going? He said. Candy bar flakes flew from his mouth. I'm looking for Sycamore Street, said Maniac. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I know where it is. Maniac waited, but the kid said nothing more. Well, uh, do you think you could tell me where it is? Stone was softer than a kid's glare. No. Maniac looked around. Other kids had stopped playing. Were staring. Someone called, do him, Mars. Someone else, waste him. The kid, as you probably guessed by now, was none other than Mars Bar Thompson. Mars Bar heard the calls, and the stone got harder. Then suddenly, he stopped glaring. Suddenly, he was smiling. He held up the candy bar, an inch from Maniac's lips. Want a bite? Maniac couldn't figure. You sure? Yeah, go ahead. Take a bite. Maniac shrugged, took the Mars bar, bit off a chunk, and handed it back. Thanks. Dead silence along the street. The kid had done the unthinkable. He had chomped on one of Mars's own bars. Not only that, but white kids just didn't put their mouths where black kids had put theirs, be it soda bottles, spoons, or candy bars. And the kid hadn't even gone for the unused end. He had chomped right over Mars bar's own bite marks. Mars Bar was confused. Who was this kid? What was this kid? As usual, when Mars Bar got confused, he got mad. He thumped Maniac in the chest. You think you're bad or something? Maniac, who was now twice as confused as Mars Bar, blinked. Huh? You think you can come down here and be bad? Is that what you think? Mars Bar was practically shouting now. No, said Maniac. I don't think I'm bad. I'm not saying I'm an angel either. Not even real good. Somewhere in between, I guess. Mars Bar jammed his arms downwards, stuck out his chin and sneered. Am I bad? Maniac was befuddled. I don't know. One minute you're yelling at me. The next minute you're giving me a bite of your candy bar. The chin jutted out more. Tell me I'm bad. Maniac didn't answer. Fly stopped buzzing. I said, tell me I'm bad. Maniac blinked, shrugged, sighed. It's none of my business. If you're bad, let your mother or father tell you. Now it was Mars Bar doing the blinking, stepping back, trying to sort things out. After a while, he looked down. What's that? Before Maniac answered, a book. Mars Bar had snatched it from his hand. This ain't yours, he said. He flipped through some pages. Looks like mine. It's somebody else's. It's mine. I'm keeping it. With rattlesnake speed, Maniac snatched the book back, except for one page, which stayed ripped in Mars Bar's hand. Give me the page, said Maniac. Mars Bar grinned. Take it, fish belly. Silence. Eyes. The flies were waiting. East End vultures. Suddenly, neither could see the other, because a broom came down like a straw curtain between their faces, and a voice said, I'll take it. It was the lady from the nearest house out to sweep her steps. She lowered the broom, but kept it between them. Better yet, she said to Mars Bar, just give it back to him. Mars Bar glared up at her. There wasn't an 11 year old in the East End who could stand up to Mars Bar's glare. In the West End, even high schoolers were known to crumble under the glare. To old ladies on both sides of Hector Street, it was all but fatal. 
And when Mars Bar stepped off a curb and combined the glare with his super low dip stride slump shuffle, well, it was said he could back up traffic all the way to Bridgeport while he took 10 minutes to cross the street. But not this time. This time, Mars Bar was up against an East End lady in her prime, and she was matching him eyeball for eyeball. And when it was over, only one glare was left standing, and it wasn't Mars Bar's. Mars Bar handed back the torn page, but not before he crumpled it into a ball. The broom pushed it away, turned him around, and swept him up the street. The lady looked down at Maniac. A little of the glare lingered in her eyes. You better get on, boy, where you belong. I can't be following you around. I've got things to do. Maniac just stood there for a minute. There was something he felt like doing, and maybe he would have, but the lady turned and went back inside her house and shut the door. So he walked away. <laughs>